Hello, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of some outlier samples from Volga Aka region in Russia. Uh, KED and SHK are samples from Kedrovo and Sheksh, I don't remember the name, um, basically cities near the city of Suzdal, uh, which is in central Russia. This is the homeland of the Russian ethnicity. and. Uh, what's interesting is most samples from this, this area, such as Iron Age samples, for example, all the Iron Age samples cluster together. They're basically finno ugric people who inhabited uh, this region before the Turkic and the Slavic ex expansion. Whereas these samples are Middle Ages samples. So these samples cover a uh, time period from 10th to 13th century. And they're actually very exotic and they are not finno ugric nor are they Slavic. Um, they're very exotic samples uh, representing exotic cultures from outside of Europe that inhabited um, that inhabited Russia, Central Russia. So, uh, Shekshovo samples, SHK002 and 001, are Turkic individuals. Uh, they are some kind of Tatars. Uh, whereas the Kideksha, or Kidek Kideksha, KED004, it's a very interesting sample, and Kideksha seems to be a Iranic individual, and I think uh, Kideksha is actually Burtas. There was an ethnicity called Burtas, Burtasi, which lived in um, basically Pienza region of Russia, and I actually have ancestry from Pienza region, um, so I have a little bit of ancestry from Burtas as well. It's a part of my heritage, and it's a part of the heritage of pretty much every central Russian. Now, uh, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, basically their uh, results, their phenotype, their traits, and their GED match results. Let's get into the video. First, let's discuss the appearance of SHK001. This is a man whose Y DNA is J2. Uh, with my Nashakot tool, he's predicted to have brown eyes, snub shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, you can see his eye color prediction in the bottom left here. When it comes to the eye shape, his predicted eye shape with my eye shape predictor tool is American Indian, Native American, so definitely not West Eurasian, definitely not like typical Russian eye shape, right? And um, actually, you can see for for nose shape prediction, his nose shape prediction is typical for Europeans, 50% Estonian, so pretty typical nose shape for Europeans. Um, but he doesn't have BH, uh, BH3, he most likely has BH1, and BH2 and BH4 status are undetermined. So, the so if he was genotyped for BH2, the prediction might look a little bit different, or it might not look different at all, because um, if you don't have BH3 and you have some other genotypes that he has, you most likely also don't have BH2. It's pretty rare uh, to have you know, these kinds of incongruences in your file. So he most likely indeed have had black hair and brown eyes, but I'm just saying he might have had something else based on his genotype in BH2, which is technically undetermined from the file. Uh, he's got a genotype for lighter skin color in Asip, and he does not have East Asian EDAR, so no East Asian shovel-shaped incisors, and no East Asian straight hair, and none, none of the other East Asian traits that uh, EDAR codes for. Now let's move on to SHK002, which is another Turkic individual from Shekshovo. Uh, also a man, his Y DNA is either N or O. Uh, I just tried to find it out by uploading him to YSEC Clade Finder, so, and it gave them other, either N or O for the predictions. So uh, those are the two predictions we can go with. They're closely related to each other. They come from the same NO haplogroup. So. And they're both a very East Eurasian in terms of the implications of N and O. N is... You know, when I think of N, I think of finno ugric admixture. And when I think of O, I think of some kind of like Japanese or Korean admixture. So these are very uh, East Eurasian admixtures, uh, East Asian haplogroups, right? Uh, when it comes to a coloring, my Nashakot predicts him to have brown eyes, uh, Middle Eastern actually snub shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, for eye shape, he's also predicted to have Estonian eye shape. So he's predicted to have actually kind of European kind of facial morphology, which is why here in the image, I depicted him looking pretty European. Uh, he's also predicted to have straight hair. He does not have any derived variants in EDAR, so no East Asian EDAR. Also no derived variants in MC1R, uh, which is what uh, I refer to as the ginger gene. Uh, he most likely had BH1, just like the previous sample. Uh, no BH2, uh, no, I mean no BH3, no BH3. And the BH2 is undetermined, so we don't know whether he had BH2 or not. That was not in the file, unfortunately. Uh, he uh, had some light color variants in TIRP1, OCA2, and also C24A4, which is why you see the p in the prediction image for his eye color, it's not looking as dark as the previous individual. 
Now let's move on to key ED004. Now this one is different ethnically from the first two individuals that I uh, I showed for the you know the appearance phenotype, right? So how is she different? Number one, she's different because she's a female. Uh, she's the only female of the three samples which this video is about. And number two, she's different because her ethnicity is different. Uh, she's not Turkic. She's likely Burtas. Once again, she likely belongs to this uh, nowadays extinct Iranic group that lived in the Penza region. And when it comes to phenotype, she's predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and brown hair. Uh, of the three individuals, she's the only one with a prediction for Greek shaped nose. Uh, take that into consideration. And she's actually also the only one to have a prediction for Middle Eastern eye shape, uh, for the eye shape predictor. So um, she's definitely quite, you know, maybe Mediterranean looking in terms of phenotype. Uh, she does not have East Asian EDAR mutation, and she has BH1 does not have BH2 or BH3 or BH4, and we can know this for certain because this is actually a pretty high quality file uh, where, you know, I, I, I took a look at her genotype and she did not have the draft variants in BH2. So she doesn't have BH2 for sure. And when it comes to her predicted appearance, this is pretty much um, pretty much what she looked like. And this is an accurate prediction because once again, BH2 is kind of the big, uh, the big dog when it comes to phenotype predictions. So this is the most important variation to look for. And um, she had some light variants in other, uh, in other variations, especially SLC24, um, SLC45A2 and SLC24A5 and uh, ASIP, which have to do with skin coloring. So she uh, most likely had very European or basically light uh, skin color. Now let's move on to the topic of ethnicity. So here you see the Eurogenes K13 and GD match results of SHK001, which is a Turkic individual, SHK002, which is another Turkic individual, and KED004, which is our Burtas. Uh, now notice the high North Atlantic in KED004. This is a signature trait of Sarmatians and Scythians of Iron Age Russia. Also note the lack of Siberian or East Asian admixture in KED004. Uh, Key ED004, or Burtas, seems to score a significant portion of the West Mediterranean component, which is typical of Scythians, but not of Sarmatians. And this is why you see with G25, um, out of the closest ancient groups, the closest groups is Scythians, and you don't really see Sarmatians anywhere here, uh, because Key ED is more similar to various Scythians uh, than to various Sarmatians. Um, this is likely due to Slavic or even Germanic admixture that was present in Scythians, but not in Sarmatians. And key ED004 seems to not score much South Asian. Uh, once again, this is typical of Scythians to not score any South Asian. However, not typical for Sarmatians who tend to score 6 to 9% of this South Asian component. Uh, the key ED, as you can see, is only scoring 3% of the South Asian component. This is twice less than what you can expect from a Sarmatian individual. Uh, now, compared to SHK002, SHK001, uh, both of these are Turkics, is more Siberian and less East Asian shifted. Both samples seem to have a roughly equal share of West Eurasian and East Eurasian admixture, and both samples are unmistakably Turkic. Out of ancient ethnic groups, Ki ED004, or Burtas, our Burtas individual, seems to be closest to Ukrainian Scythians. Uh, SHK002 seems to be closest to Karahanids, medieval Kazakh nomads and medieval Karakaba Turkics. SHK001 is pretty similar to SHK002 scoring, closest to medieval nomads from Kazakhstan, followed by Karakaba Turkics. Now let's move on to Pont DNA LK10 results. Uh, with Pont DNA L calculators, we start to see the difference between SHK001 and SHK002. SHK002 on the top right clearly has more West Asian or CHG admixture. This is also reflected with the G25 results for SHK002. Not only does SHK002 have more CHG admixture, it also has more South Indian affinities, scoring 6.66% ASI compared to SHK001's 3.75%. Uh, key ED004 or Burtas has the highest CHG admixture of these samples at 30%. This is a typical score for Scythians, but a very low score for Sarmatians who tend to have around 35% CHG. Compared to modern Russians, key ED004, uh, which I want to remind you is from medieval 11th century central Russia, uh, is very southern and very 
very West Asian shifted. Now let's move on to their trades. Let's start with um, we're gonna start with SHK001, which is our Turkic individual number one with J2 Hapla group. Right, and this is what we're seeing here. Let me expand my window. So what we're seeing is that this individual has GG in Comtz Valmet variation, meaning Val Val genotype or Warrior genotype, higher activity of the Comt enzyme and quicker breakdown of dopamine. Individuals with this genotype have advantages in stress resilience, but disadvantage is in attention tasks. Uh, very cool stuff. This is actually this genome analyzer. It's on my website, which you will find the link to in the description. Or actually, I don't know if I'm going to put this in the description of the video. Um, but you can find this by just clicking on the About Me page on my channel. I have a link to my website there. Uh, this individual has GG genotype in Comte's this variation, which is the typical genotype for most humans. Uh, this is undetermined. MAOA, higher MAOA enzyme activity. Uh, so less dopamine levels. This is kind of like another warrior genotype here. And not any no-go learner variants in DRD2's pro in pro variation, which means higher number of D2 dopamine receptor sites in the brain and a higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Um, another genotype for higher likelihood of schizophrenia and more D2 dopamine receptors. Um, this is a genotype that's typical for most humans and leads to slightly higher D2 dopamine receptors and better memory performance. Once again, higher. Uh, the, the trend here is that this individual has more dopamine D2 receptors than typical. Um, CC genotype, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly, slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. This is DRD1. Uh, this is another genotype in DRD1 that is a typical genotype associated with slightly higher odds of autism and tobacco addiction. Um, so I'm, not, I'm just skipping all the non-genotype stuff. Uh, AA in this variation, mostly Eurasian genotype, which increases the risk of autism and autistic personality traits, such as rigid behavior. Okay, all of this is not genotyped. Okay, genotype for OXTR, this variation, uh, which means this individual has two variants for lower levels of empathy. Very interesting stuff. So these two are not determined. This is the main one that's sort of the most important one. So uh, when I talk about the sociopath gene, I mainly talk about this genotype here in this variation. Um, and in this case, it's undetermined. Uh, AC in this variation, which leads to a slight decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. TT in this variation, leading to a slightly a slight increase in type 2 diabetes. Uh, for hemochromatosis, nothing is determined. None of this is in the file. Uh, for Alzheimer's, none of this is in the file except for TT here, which leads to a slightly decreased risk of Alzheimer's. Cool. Uh, and le now let's move on to myopia. Um, this individual has AA here, which is typical genotype and s leads to slightly increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness. I have the same genotype here. And by the way, uh, you might be able to tell by the overlay, I do have myopia. Um, I can't, like I'm sitting in front of the screen. If I take off the glasses, I can't even read what it says. Like without the glasses, I can't make out what it, what it says on the screen. And I'm sitting right in front of it. So yeah, myopia is unpleasant. Okay, now let's talk about the... The second, let's move on to the second individual. Let's go to um, SHK002. Right. So this one is a little bit lower coverage. As you can see, most of the stuff is not present in the file. Um, but GG here, which is the typical gene type for humans and leads to a slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Uh, GG here, which means no European no-go lottery variants and higher amount of D2 dopamine receptor sites in the brain, the same genotype as the previous individual. AG here, which means intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. <coughs> and uh, AA in this variation, which is implicated in a decreased number of dopamine D2 sites in the brain and an increased likelihood of alcoholism as well as, mem as decreased memory function. This is not a typical human genotype. This is definitely not, not a typical human genotype. You don't, I don't see this very often. Uh, this is all non-determined. This is lactose persistence non-determined. Um, AA in this OXTR variation, this, the same genotype as the previous individual. Once again, uh, two variants for higher OXTR expression. No, this is different. This is different because the previous individual had a uh, sociopath uh, genotype here, but this guy has got two variants for higher OXTR expression and increased empathy. So this is different. 
all right for diabetes GG here which leads to lower risk of various autoimmune disorders and type 1 diabetes CC here which leads to a sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes so definitely it doesn't have type 1 diabetes all right for hemochromatosis doesn't have yeah doesn't have any risk uh, variants for hemochromatosis Alzheimer's undetermined and myopia as you can see it's all on it's all in, not in the file so I can't talk about that here now let's move on to the third individual I'm going to put the window here I'm going to talk about the third individual uh, which is KED004 which is our Burtas woman all right and she is much higher coverage so there's going to be a lot to talk about here she has got the warrior gene uh, slightly lower risk of schizophrenia in COMT uh, slightly decreased risk of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder once again in COMT uh, TT in MAOA 6323 which leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme so this is the opposite of the warrior genotype this is the um, so there's the warrior and then there's the warrior she's got the warrior genotype in COMT and the warrior genotype in MAOA there is a distinction between these two uh, no derived, no gold learner variants in DRD2, so okay. Uh, higher odds of schizophrenia, more dopamine D2 receptors, intermediate number of D2 dopamine receptors, uh, slightly lower risk of schizophrenia, and decreased number of dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, once again, this is a very interesting variation. I actually have the opposite of this. I have AA here, which is super rare, uh, and it uh, leads to increased risk of various mental health issues and more dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, this is TAC1. She's not genotyped for this and okay uh, here once again DRD2 typical genotype okay CC genotype of this variation of DRD1 which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions okay uh, TC genotype at this variation of DRD3 which is implicated and slightly higher risk of OCD and intellectual disability okay uh, AA genotype in this variation of DRD3 which is mostly a Eurasian genotype and it increased the risk of autism and autistic personality traits such as rigid behavior okay let's move on to lactose persistence oh she's got lactose persistence okay so she's got AG here which means the individual is heterozygous for the European lactose persistence mutation and is probably not lactose intolerant and she's got TT here which actually means that she has two derived variants for European lactose persistence and is definitely not lactose intolerant all right so she does have the European lactose persistence mutation very interesting stuff here uh, for the empathy uh, she's got TC here which is associated with the intermediate OXTR expression and average levels of empathy same as me I have the same genotype here she's got GG in this variation of OXTR which means this individual has two variants for lower levels of empathy same as me I have the same genotype here and here as her uh, for diabetes not determined here slight decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes uh, here which means the individual has two variants for lower odds of type 2 diabetes okay for hemochromatosis does not carry variants for hemochromatosis for Alzheimer's let's check real quick TT here which means no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in the AP APOE and which leads to slightly decreased risk of Alzheimer's once again probably did not have Alzheimer's for myopia let's scroll down AG here wow that's crazy okay so um, most people have AA but she has 1G variant which actually leads to uh, lower risk of myopia and slightly better eyesight very interesting stuff so she probably uh, she probably wasn't looking like me with glasses uh, she's got this genotype which leads to an increase in the risk of myopia uh, maybe not <laughs> she's got this genotype uh, CC which leads to um, increase in the risk of myopia maybe not maybe she did need glasses so that's pretty much all there, there is to talk about when it comes to these genomes um, you can download them from links which are in, in the description in all my videos at the, end, in, at the end I say that you can download them but people never people never listen they always ask me where can I get these genomes you can get them in the link from the description that's where I put them so um, I'm glad that you watched until the end and you uh, helped me raise my watch time. <laughs> you can get um, these genomes from link which is in the description. And thanks for watching my video. Goodbye.